as an entrepreneur, as a group of entrepreneurs, anything that you give out will 100% dilute you. And any yep. mistake you make in the beginning will, you're going to be the one that's going to be paying for that mistake. So it's very important, especially in the beginning, and especially when you're dealing with equity, to be very careful and make sure that things are very, very clear. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. 20 Minute Leaders is a proud supporter of Make-A-Wish Israel and tech to peace and is in proud collaboration with Secret Chord Ventures, J Ventures, Riverside FM, Fusion VC, Birthright Excel, J Impact, Leap, Google for Startups, and Hippo, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Hello and welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today I'm being joined by Ellie Sprung, a partner at Igal Arnon Tadmor Levy Law Offices with a special expertise in the field of high-tech and venture capital. His clients include high-tech companies and entrepreneurs as well as venture capital funds, incubators and accelerators in a wide array of industries. Ellie has extensive experience in representing his clients in financing, exit transactions, intellectual property and commercial transactions and agreements, as well as assisting in the day-to-day operations of a company with his practice spanning the entire life cycle of emerging growth companies. Ellie Sprung, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. How are you? I'm great, Michael. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm excited to get to know you better over these 20 minutes. Ellie, you has, uh, you, you've been a part of the, the ecosystem, the tech ecosystem for quite some time, but not just from the tech sector, uh, with uh, Tadmor Levy & Co, um, you know, high tech and VC partner, and you're getting to work both with entrepreneurs, with, with investor sides throughout different life cycles all across from the early stages to M&As, et cetera. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to picking your brain on these different stages, the different experiences you've had with these different stakeholders, both from a personal level on your on your own experiences, but also insights that you've garnered over these years as to the do's and don'ts and potential potentially give us some tips on on things that you know I as a young entrepreneur can can work on avoiding. So any Let's get started. Tell me a little bit about your your own journey. What brought you into this ecosystem and how did you end up here? Well, I tell you, the path started I was in, when I was in the Army. I was in the IDF spokesperson's unit and I was finishing up and I knew I wanted to go to university, but wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Uh, so I took back then, way back then, it was there was a book. They, you didn't have to apply online. Um, yeah. And I looked at everything to see what was interesting and I thought law was the most was the least of all evils to go into that didn't sound the most boring. So I said, that sounds like something good. And then, so I, I applied to law and thankfully I, I also got in and I started going to law. And then uh, when we needed, to, I needed to find an internship. So I, I interviewed at uh, Egal Arnon where I started my internship. And really because of my English and my Hebrew, um, because that was such an asset, I saw that the high tech world is really a place where I could put that asset to use. Um, that's kind of where it started. And I'd say the business and tech world always interested me. So it was kind of the perfect storm. And I started there and, uh, found it to actually be interesting and, uh, really piqued my interest and enjoyed it. So, and, and I've been enjoying it ever since I'd say for, unfortunately, unfortunately it's been more than 20 years now. So, uh, it's still been, been interesting. And then to go back to my roots in the end, when Egal are known and I became, I became a partner at Tudmore Levy and then. When both firms merged, so now it's Egal and Tudmore Levy, I went back to my roots, so now I'm back to where I started and uh, everything's back to normal, quote unquote. What, um, what do you think uh, about your, your position, the, the way that you're interacting with the ecosystem made you do it for so long? You know, what is it that, that you know, sort of tips, keeps you alive in the state? Um, I say, you know, some people say, look, Ellie, for what you're doing here, you're kind of just a lawyer. All you guys have templates. It's, you're kind of cookie cutter and you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, A, how is it interesting? And B, why, you know, why do I have to pay so much money for you to do nothing really? Um, but I think the peaking of the interest is there's a lot that's the same. But there's also a lot that's different. And there's a lot that really depends on the founders, on the entrepreneurs, on their business on how they see the business, on, on the market, et cetera. And each one has its little idiosyncrasies. And at the end, the tech is really cool. Um, and that always keeps things interesting. Um, every deal has its own little 
special special thing. Um, you know, you go up against counsel that you've done many deals together before, and each one has its own issues, its all its own things that you really need to work on. Um, I also find the people interesting, not only the tech, and each person has their own. You know, you make a lot of friends over life, and thankfully, I think I, m- most of my clients I can call not only clients but also friends. Very very cool. Tell me a little bit about you know the way that you're seeing you know the the entrepreneurial journey from your side of things, right? So you get to experience entrepreneurs and stakeholders in different parts along their along their cycles. You know how how do you experience the the startup mindset from your end? So I think a lot of times you see, uh, I want to say kids, which is kind of insulting, but uh, unfortunately, as you can see, the the amount of hair that I have on my head or or that I don't have in my head, then uh, I'm usually a little bit older than, than, than most of the entrepreneurs. But, um, you know, so the, these people come in, these entrepreneurs come in, and, and they're literal geniuses. They, they, their tech knowledge and their, their computer knowledge and programming knowledge and, and engineering knowledge, et cetera, is, is really off the charts. But sometimes just, you know, having done and, and, and been with a lot of startups, hundreds if not thousands of startups, and seen them on their journey, so there's a lot, even though I don't have that genius in tech, genius in, um, in the engineering and stuff like that, I can, we can still help them a lot. But not only in the legal world. Um, there was one entrepreneur that came in and told me about her product, and uh, she told me about this issue she had. And in the end, uh, we proposed a, a proposal that, that could really help her with her product. And I think in the end that that entrepreneur actually didn't end up hiring us as 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 uh, her lawyers, but um, you know it was I, I thought it was a great idea for the product, and I think she actually used it for her product. Um, so you know because we've seen a lot, we can help it, and I think we're, we're trusted advisors not only on the legal side, but really also also in, in everything else that that comes along. A lot of times we'll we'll give business advice and, and different uh, tips for entrepreneurs al- along the way that can that really can help. For instance, if there's an entrepreneur that is, isn't a developer and, and needs development help um, and will outsource it, which, which happens sometimes. So they'll say, okay, and, and you know, they reached an agreement between the entrepreneur and the developer that for, let's just say, $50,000, the person will develop the app or, or whatever it is. So the person comes to me and says, okay, I'm going to give him $50,000. But you know, they'll all come back and say, okay, $50,000 is great. Can you wait till the end for the $50,000 when you're happy with the product? Oh, that's a great idea. I was just going to give him $50,000 up front. And then you have a little bit of negotiation because the developer doesn't want to get everything at the end. So if you can milestone base it, or little things like that, that someone who doesn't have the experience in doing deals with other people, that's really things where I think as a trusted advisor, you can really help the, these entrepreneurs who, again, are geniuses on the one side, but total novices on the other side. And that's really where I think it's important to get a a, a good lawyer who, who knows what he or she is doing and also has done it many times can really come and help. I think that's a good segue to some of the considerations of perhaps the do's and don'ts that are, that are not necessarily the most trivial for young entrepreneurs. Maybe the things that we don't necessarily uh, read in the, read in the playbooks, but things that you've experienced in your own, in your own state. What are, what are some key, key concepts, just like the example that you mentioned with the outsourcing dilemma? What, what are some of these situations that you've experienced that now as you're working with, with young entrepreneurs, you're saying, okay, these are things that I'm especially on the lookout for because I know that with the lack of experience, they're more opted to, to make a mistake. I think the most, there are two important things that an entrepreneur has. The most important is obviously, the IP that the entrepreneur is developing, because that's in the end of the day, if you're hoping to be acquired, that's what the acquirer is interested in. So you need to do whatever you can do to make sure your IP is protected, whether that's an NDA, whether that's an assignment agreement, you want to make sure if anyone's doing any development work for you, that that person says, whatever I do for you belongs to you. It does right, sound trivial. Course. It does sound trivial, but many times, you know, I, I, we've been in situations where that piece of paper wasn't signed and that person then came back and said, oh no, I'm one of the founders and I, I get, you know, 30% is mine or the IP is mine. I never gave it to you. I just gave you a license and the ownership still remains with me. 
So, so these, so these things, situations actually actually happen when you now went one. One hundred percent. I mean, these, these these are actual these are real stories. These aren't things that I've just made up. These are things. If again, if you've been doing this for twenty years, you see a lot. You, you know, some for instance, one person once said, uh, "Ellie, look, here's here's my company. Look at this great agreement I signed. This guy said he can bring great investors because one thing that a company needs to run is money. Uh, he's going to bring great investors, and and I'm only have to give him five percent. And look here, I gave him five percent. I said that's great. What happens if?" He doesn't bring you an investor. Oh, then you've given him 5% and he's done absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's a good point. You know, and after the agreement signed, it's a little hard to unwind it. But if on the other hand, you know, and if the agreement is to give the person 5%, that's great, but let that person earn the 5%. So I always say give equity for, for something that the person has done and not, not for something that the person didn't do anything. So here's a, here's a dilemma I'd like to present to you. A lot of the examples sure. that you've given me it seems like a shortfall or shortcoming of the entrepreneur side is that they're running quickly towards the work and towards the, what we call in Hebrew, the tough list without necessarily laying a foundation, which keeps them, which keeps them, uh, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Now, walk me through why that is. What's happening? You know, what is perhaps the reluctancy or the lack of knowledge from the entrepreneur side that is causing this problem? And why, and, and what are ways that we can, that, that we as young entrepreneurs can change our mindset and become better at it? I think, I think you, you hit it right on the nose when you said the lack of knowledge. I think entrepreneurs don't realize the importance of certain things. You know, they, they think that lawyers are important later on in time. And, uh, you know, they don't realize that sometimes a, a short conversation with a lawyer in the beginning can really save a lot of heartache, a lot of money and a lot of strife at the end. We once had uh, a company that they wanted to incorporate very quickly. And they went onto the registrar of company site and they saw that incorporating a partnership is a couple of hundred shekels cheaper than incorporating Cheap. a company. And, and that's what they did. Now, in the end, for a VC to invest, they don't invest in partnerships. So the, it, they needed to flip into a company, which cost them a lot of money. Had they just had a five second even call with a lawyer, they would have said, no, no, don't do that. You may be saving a couple hundred shekel now, but, but you'll be, and, and they, this company had to pay a lot of money to, to change into, into a company. So I think the first thing is really knowledge. Um, there are a lot of lawyers out there, a lot of good lawyers out there. And, and uh, I think don't be afraid to just pick up the phone and call. Uh, I think that, that's number one, that's very important. Um, and just being aware of various issues kind of puts you, puts up your antenna so that you are able in the end to say, wait, maybe that's a problem. Wait, I remember Ellie said something about that. Hold the horses a second before I sign anything, before I agree. Let me just give a call and make sure that it's okay. For instance, sometimes people will promise a certain percentage. You know, don't worry, you're going to have 2% of my company. Now, that's great, but hopefully companies grow. And then you give more and more and more equity. But if someone was promised 2%, then that 2% may not be diluted and is always 2% even after the company has grown. So if you had a let's dive into that a little bit. Okay. Let, let's dive into that a little bit more because this is, the, I think, a really important note. Let, share, let, 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 let's do this with the foundation. So percentages, numbers, equity, this is something that we're constantly dealing with. Okay. So I would say, again, we started with the most important thing is the IP. You need to protect that. But I think the second most important asset is, is actually the equity of the company because you only have 100%. And as, mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, as a group of entrepreneurs, Anything that you give out will 100% dilute you. And any yep. mistake you make in the beginning will, you're going to be the one that's going to be paying for that mistake. So it's very important, especially in the beginning, and especially when you're dealing with equity, to be very careful and make sure that things are very, very clear. Because anytime, and you're always looking out as far as the lawyers and, and the advisors are concerned, we want to make sure that when you get to the exit, that you're not going to have any stumbling blocks. You're not going to have any obstacles. And Sometimes people like to come out of the woodwork and say, oh, I saw that you're getting acquired for X number of hundreds of millions of dollars. By the way, I get this and I get that. And usually you'll just throw money at them to, as if to, to, to avoid the nuisance. And if wow. you dealt with it correctly from day one, you could even avoid that. So when you're talking about equity, I think you know, promising equity is fine. Again, I think we said to promise based on results, not on promises. 
But also, you need to deal in whole numbers. Because percentages change all the time, but numbers don't. If you have 10 shares or 100 shares, you could say that that today represents X percent. But in the future, it most likely will not because everyone suffers or enjoys dilution. And people think that dilution is a terrible thing. But if I hold, you know, 100% of the, of the pie and that pie is worth a million dollars and then someone invests and you only hold 50%, but now that 50, that pie is increased not, you know, to, to $50 million. Well, then what you hold is actually increased in value. Sure. And so I think it's again, with very these... important to deal with whole numbers. You can say, and if you're going to, people want to know what percentage that is, make sure you say that's what it is today, but make sure that right. you're not promising that on a going forward basis. Right. I mean, it sounds like it then, you know, this tied in with the previous items that we talked about, then it sounds. Like it, it's, you know, the, the understanding from the entrepreneur side that these, that there are technicalities here and there are important best practices for how these things work. And I assume that from your position, you're coming in and you're, you know, you're the, you're the best guidance for the entrepreneur. I mean, I'm guessing these are not necessarily things that an entrepreneur needs to understand from the get go, but it's more the practice and the intentionality of consulting and having that understanding that the entrepreneur may not have all the information and there are probably problematic places in everything that they're doing, then a person like you can come in and guide through that tunnel, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say definitely. I think repeat entrepreneurs make less mistakes because they've seen it before. They've probably made the mistakes before. And now they know on the second, third, or fourth time around not to repeat those mistakes. But because we've seen hundreds, if not thousands of companies, and we've seen a lot of, lot of mistakes, so we know how to avoid those things and make sure that the entrepreneur can actually focus on the business, focus on the tech, which is what's really important. Uh, I remember right. a conversation I had with another entrepreneur that was, the entrepreneur was debating, should he go for the exit that he had on the table, or should he go for an investment to grow the company that he also had on the table? To which I, you know, and I, and I just I kind of put, you know, as long as you have to ask the hard questions, I said, well, what are you looking, you know? Yeah. At the end of the day, we all want to do what's right. We want to do what we enjoy. We also want to make money. I said, well, look how much money you're going to make out of this exit. And the person saw how much money. I said, how much more do you need? You know, and, and, and it was a very nice exit for the entrepreneur. And I said, look, the investment's great. You know, you'll grow and you'll, you'll be a huge company. But right now, if you're acquired, you'll be part of the acquiring company, which is in and of itself a big company. You'll be part of that. You'll help grow your business there. And you'll get a nice chunk of change to put on the side, which is what you want. If you go for the investment, yes, maybe, you know, you'll be another Facebook, but maybe, you know, you won't. And there's no assurances. So in the end, the entrepreneur went home and, and thought about it and, and came back after we, we closed the exit deal and actually thanked me for that conversation because he knew that that was really the right decision for, for him and his family. There are other entrepreneurs who, you know, I, I just want to grow my company and be the number one company in my field. And that's fine. Again, so long as your other partners agree with that vision. But there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. There's a right answer that's for you. And I think as long as you consult and consider all of the relevant parameters and ramifications of what you decide, then that's fine. I'd say what we are is lawyers are usually, again, we say trusted advisors and we give advice and you could listen to our advice or you could not listen to our advice. And we always go to sleep and we, we sleep fine, you know, in e either way. We give your advice on, based on our experience and, and the entrepreneur many times listens and sometimes they don't listen. I would say most of the time when we give advice, I think in the end we're correct, but it, it has happened that we weren't correct based on a business decision here or there. But as long as I'd say our job is to make sure that the entrepreneur knows what the risks are, and if the entrepreneur knows what the risks are, then the entrepreneur is the one who makes the decision, yes or no. And, you know, that's, that's why the entrepreneur holds the equity. That's why the entrepreneur is the entrepreneur and manager of his or her company. Completely. Why do you enjoy what you do today so much? I know it's a very open ended question, but, you know, when you look at your day to day, what is it that you really get the biggest kick out of? I think the best part is really interaction with people. I think you see a lot of, I think it's the, we'll call the tech um, people are, are good people. 
And I think the more you, you're interacting, and it's the entire ecosystem, it's not just the entrepreneurs, it's the investors, it's the advisors, and just being day to day with, with good people, I think that's, that's one of the, I think, a great part. I think, I think it's interesting. I think it's evolving. You know, if, if now we're talking about, I, I remember 20 years ago, we were talking about self driving cars and electric cars. And, you know, that was a dream. And now you're seeing it on the road. So it's always nice to see different things like that. Some of the tech is really life saving. And when you can say, look, I've helped this and helped that, you know, I mean, my father's a physician and he's helped more people than I can count. But, you know, I won't be saving lives per se, but I could definitely say that I've helped lives in, in doing what I do. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's a very interesting feel. I think it, it's always changing. And uh, again, I think it's the people and, and the interesting things that we're working on, I think, is really not only me, but I think the rest of the community is really why, why we're here. Eli, thank you so much. This was such an enjoyable conversation. Learned a lot. Uh, some very actionable insights for me as I am on to my own journey. And I really want to thank you for the time and the energy. So thank you. Uh, stay safe okay. and stay healthy. Continue making a positive impact on entrepreneurs around you. And uh, best of luck. Thanks for having me.